Hello everyone, welcome to Professional IAS, the only institution across the country that provides curated and well-customized strategy for working professionals and for the state government employees who are already doing lower cadre jobs and also to the home maintenance. I will take one minute from you in order to explain the module series that we have started. So you can know that on our YouTube channel there is an Indian uh, economy prelims come main test series going on, please do that. Union budget completely we have done part 3, please do see that. Don't miss the shots because shots give you first hand factual information with regard to any updates from the government. So make sure that this is all uh, you are doing. This is a new series that I have started where uh, I will be discussing 15 uh, minutes, 15 current affairs will be dealt. Okay, fine. So that is the 15th February 2024. So under this particular 15 minutes, 15 current affairs uh, new module, uh, make sure that uh, it is not, I am just telling you one liners. It is a very comprehensive coverage of that particular current affairs. So I will be covering all the points, but the only thing is that there won't be much explanation of the concepts. Okay. And uh, there won't be any uh, challenges of that particular current affair or way forward or uh, pros, cons, advantages, disadvantages. All these will not be covered. The 15 minutes, 15 current affairs is basically what has the, what is there in the news with regard to its features, highlights, facts that only I am covering in this. It is a very, very good initiative. So, 15 uh, current affairs per day, it will become around 150 per month and uh, for 6 months, it will be around 700 and for a year, it will be around 2000 plus and in the meanwhile, you also come across a lot of independent videos also. 3000, 4000 current affairs if you are studying okay for your examination or six months you can say that 2000 current affairs is a very very huge benefit it will definitely you will get the questions from this particular series so stay tuned so let us get started okay our lecture bharat rice okay so this is a rice you can see here this rice is sold at the on the brand name bharat rice and this rice you will get at uh, rupees 20, uh, 29 per kilogram why government has started this Bharat rice? Because the food grain prices, the retail prices, the prices that we buy has increased to what 15%. So in order to give relief to the customers or to the consumers and citizens, the government has gone the Bharat rice brand. Bharat brand is a central government initiative to sell high quality pulses, okay, rice and other essential commodities at subsidized prices. Subsidized is nothing but 29 rupees. Uh, per kilogram you will get. Pulses and Atta is already being sold under this brand name. In AG of Bharat Rice, remember this point, you will you will find 5% five per, uh, five of broken rice. In the picture you can see this is the broken rice, this is the normal rice. Okay, clear. So some GK is there, some one-liners I will cover in one particular uh, topic. Okay, India will overtake China as the biggest uh, driver of global oil by 2027. So remember this point, at this point of time, China is the biggest driver of global oil. India will become the uh, top most uh, by 2027. It is nothing but India will demand more oil from the world in order to fulfill its economic needs. Basically, we are putting lot of efforts to develop transportation and industry consumption will increase in the world's fastest growing economy that is India. It is revealed by International Energy Agency. It is located in Paris and uh, they have given a specific India oil market outlook. Here also they said that India's oil demands will increase by 5.48 million barrels per day in 2023, 6 point, uh, increase to 6.64 million barrels per day in 2030. BPD means barrels per day. China is at this point of time biggest driver of oil demand across the globe. We will cross China by 2027. With this you can understand that we are doing very very great with regard to economy. Telangana Legislative Assembly on Monday that is uh, on 13th February has unanimously passed a bill to ban hookah parlors. This was done by, a amend by amending an act called as Telangana Amendment Bill with regard to regulation of trade and commerce manufacturing supply of distribution of cigarette and other tobacco products. Okay. India is today's Bangladesh largest export destination in Asia. So Bangladesh uh, exports to many countries. So, for India has now become the largest export country for India in Asia. This is the current affairs you should know. Orange alert. What is orange alert where it is declared like that uh, question may come. Orange alert is given in Abu Dhabi, Dubai city 
basically the abu dhabi is dubai city is nowadays uh, going through unusual weather patterns as they are experiencing heavy rainfall and also hail storms that are disrupting their normal activity and uh, they are even exp ex expecting that this particular heavy rainfall may also call may also lead to what flooding of city so orange alert is declared where the question may come so make sure that it is in abu dhabi dubai oil imports of india and strategic oil reserve let us see this topic india is currently the third largest consumer of oil first is us consume a lot of oil second is china india is third 85% of our total oil needs uh, we actually depends upon import and our dependency will generally increase if the domestic production falls if india does not uh, produce own oil then 85% will even become more 85% we are anyhow importing it of all the oils like petrol diesel and kerosene diesel is the 50% of the imports are coming from coming for diesel and this is the uh, oil imports of the india now every country if suppose india is at war with countries so on india united nations will put sanctions and many countries stop trading with us with regard to oil so that is the reason every country will maintain strategic oil reserve if no country su uh, supplies oil to us how we are going to survive so india is maintaining 66 days of okay oil reserves in our uh, uh, as a as a reserve oil as a oil reserve if no country gives us oil also till 66 days we are able to fulfill our oil needs okay this includes 7 days of requirements are stored under underground strategic reserve and the rest is give, put under depots and banks it is stored india is a associate member of international energy agency according to international energy agency every country should maintain minimum 90 days of their demand but we are not doing this we are maintaining only 66 days of reserve but according to iea standards we have to maintain 90 days so we are anyhow short of it okay then corruption perception index it is given by uh, in transparency international and it assesses 180 countries it gives a score of 100 100 is very very clean country zero means highly corrupt country according to this index two third of the countries whatever they have assessed are having the score below 50 on the index okay so it means what uh, two third is there less than below you can understand that uh, they are going towards highly corrupt so that is a very very uh, disheartening uh, fact denmark is the most uh, uh, least corrupt country in the world and top jet start and out of uh, 100 score denmark has got 90 finland second the most corrupted country is somalia just have 11 if you are having zero you are more corrupt 100 you are very clean country india maintains its position with a score of 39 okay less than 50 only that's why ranking 93rd in 2022 india rank was 85 okay in 2023 it became 93 it means from 2022 to 2023 corruption in india has increased so the whatever the data is there with regard to corruption the transparency international is collecting it is basically pertaining to public sector corruption only not with private corruption only government offices how they are looting the how they are uh, uh, exploiting the people that data only will be collected and collected from various organizations like world bank world economic forum so and so forth what is india middle east economic corridor you can see in the picture very clearly here we want to bypass basically we don't want to uh, come in contact with pakistan and iran so we just wanted to because these two are troubling country for us that is the reason we want to build this like this okay we'll go to gulf countries we'll go, uh, transcend to saudi arabia and we'll go to what eurasia so in order to india that's why it is called as what you can see here india middle east europe economic corridor so india is there this is the middle east and europe economic corridor this will bypass pakistan and iran remember this point okay it may be a statement in the uh, question okay so uh, first we are going to build from here to here this is one corridor and this is second corridor fine so trade route it's a trade route once upon a time actually when india was akhand bharat we do used to trade in the same route including pakistan and iran also okay so we had contacts with subcontinent middle east and eurasia has ancient uh, relations are there with regard to trading so these regions have historically shared common interest of trading and culturally very much uh, intermix happened but because of the partition trade route got disrupted and we cannot take the help of pakistan iran at this point of time 
so that's why the delhi government or delhi is or indian government is trying to circumvent means it does not want to uh, go through islamabad and tehran that is iran but still want to connect to europe that's why from india to middle east will go to sea road from uh, middle east to eurasia will go to what uh, land route that is what the government plan is there okay in order to avoid this troubling country for us okay this is like very commonly you can uh, read by yourself in g20 summit last uh, happened uh, last year india us uae saudi arabia france germany italy european union all of them has signed a memorandum of understanding for the establishment of corridor all are happy the projects include two corridor ek to hai east corridor connecting india to west asia middle east that is what i have told you which is a sea route dusra hai northern corridor connecting west asia middle east to europe so one corridor we have to we are involved and the another corridor they are involved okay even uh, us president joe biden has also praised india's efforts to build a more sustainable integrated middle east means we have to integrate middle east in our trading economic and cultural aspects indebted nations which country is most indebted nations uh, one report was released by international monetary fund according to this imf topping the chart united states is the most indebted nations okay borrowed lot of money to the tune of 32.9 trillion money that they have borrowed and they are, have to give back to the people from the, where they have taken followed by united kingdom second spot with regard to indebted nations japan is the most indebted nation in asia but ranks third worldwide okay ranking fourth is globally is netherlands okay so you can understand that india is not there in top four and india data they have not given that is why i am not telling you that which ranks india holds but obviously if india is, is holding 35 rank 20 20 rank does not matter also if you are in top five only that is all that is a big issue that's why we didn't we don't need to care about it now let us see uh, seven upi seven countries have accepted what upi expansion so you can see that bhutan is there oman is there mauritius all these i have given you just for your understanding basically what happened is every country is their own uh, central banks will be there no they have been tied up with npcil national payment corporation of india so oman central bank tied up with npcil to implement upi mauritius central bank tied up with what uh, U npcil to implement what upi so the data here whatever the lines are there it is related to that only you just have to remember that remember that which one of the following countries have uh, launched upi uh, recently so bhutan oman mauritius we also have some more here france is the first country to uh, accept upi sri lanka also accepted upi nepal france south east so pti uh, public trust of india the government of india's um, okay mouthpiece they have given this chart france is the first country to implement upi in their country okay later on all these countries followed so the chart may help you to remember for a long time then amrit bharat station scheme in this particular scheme 1318 1318 identified railway station will be given what improved facility such as you can able to access nothing but able to go to the station very early by road by rail like that waiting areas will be created toilets wifi and more even for the person with disabilities will also be uh, taken care of and for their movement also uh, payments for their movement also corridors will be created this scheme is not a scheme like one time we implement and we don't have to implement again it is not like that amrit bharat station scheme is a uh, is a continuous development scheme continuously it will focus on basic amenities over there water supply bathrooms etc connectivity sustainability and integration with the city infrastructure and this particular they will also help to construct uh, a particular area within the railway station where the, that particular districts uh, uh, products will be actually showcased and exhibited for purchase so one station one product is also promoted under this scheme then india and uae has signed you can see that the uh, prime minister of uh, our country we also have here and we also have the uh, uae prime minister they are exchanging bilateral treaties so you can see that india and uae signed the bilateral investment treaty bilateral means i will invest in your country you invest me in my country so that has been exchanged by uh, two countries uh, um, heads india also signed a comprehensive economic partnership this is only for investment means here uh, the countries have actually targeted means they have given each other a target that this much we will invest comprehensive economic partnership is little bit broader 
financial uh, liberties given to two countries it could include tax reforms it could include uh, uh, what investment reforms it could include um, uh, interchanging of foreign exchange remittances limit etc so more financial and tax liberties will be there under the economic comprehensive economic partnership this also we have signed in the year 2022 because of this sepa this is generally called as what sepa agreement is also there this we have already implemented in 2022 because of that 16 percent increase happened in the bilateral trade okay the uae is the fourth largest source of fdi for india in 2022 to 2023 means from uae lot of investment is coming in our country and that investment is accounting for 3.5 billion dollar investments what is one day bharat standards of train to which 40000 indian coaches will be upgraded so please make sure that in the interim budget nirmala madam has already uh, announced that 40000 indian railway coaches nothing but bogies will be upgraded to vande bharat so now you should know that what is the standard of vande bharat which we wanted to have in this 40000 coaches first vande bharat premium team, train launch in the year 2019 it is a self propelled semi high speed train service self propelled means once you lock the speed once you lock the direction it will go by itself so it is having the speed of 160 km and if you are traveling with this train you can reduce your time by 25 to 45 percent if your journey is 100 minute journey is there from a to b area so you can reach this particular area in 60 minutes only not in 100 minutes remember this point it is a air condition uh, train so all the bogies will be air condition chair car services the chair uh, car um, the um, train chairs will be like like this car you can just slide back and you can rest your back like that on short to medium distance travel only remember very important distinct statement in the examination short to medium distance only one day bharat trains will generally go this train was also called as train 18 and they run on a technology called as distributed traction power technology the name of the technology is important the process mechanism is not important for the exam but don't forget the name here okay now sovereign gold bond scheme series fourth has been launched by government of india and february 20 or so uh, this particular scheme will be available to all of us to invest it is a uh, most favor gold investment scheme at this point of time rbi administer this particular sovereign gold bond scheme okay on behalf of the government if you uh, if you don't purchase the physical gold instead of that you purchase sovereign gold bonds they are issued as government of india stocks under government security act 2006 this is important act related to sgb remember this point once you take the sovereign gold bond you will get a certificate of holding later on you can convert this certificate into demat form and if you are in need of money no you can give that particular bond to the uh, bank and you can take money of that particular how much you have invested okay according to the uh, rules and regulations so it can also be used as collateral remember this point this uh, sgbs are sold through scheduled commercial banks like kerala bank uh, vijaya bank etc stock holding corporation of india directly clearing corporation of india designated post offices and uh, various stock exchanges you can go through okay if you are earning interest obviously interest is given in this particular bond so the on the interest you will be taxed as per the income tax act of 1961 so income tax act 1961 if you are getting interest on the interest it will be ta taxed but when you sell your sgb so then gold bond to some other person when you sell this and in this selling you do a profit you do a profit on this profit there is a exemption is there okay that is only called as capital gains so if you gain something on this particular uh, bond while trading that particular gain will not be taxed interest is taxed but capital gains on the bonds is not taxed remember this point it is also important india to build naval bases in agati and minikoi island you have to understand that a uh, uh, lot of islands of our lakshadweep are at one place and minikoi is little bit farer okay so all the islands of lakshadweep and minikoi are separated by a channel called as 9 degree channel and minikoi and maldives is separated by 8 degree channel now maldives is not our friend so it is important that we have to secure this area because maldives here in maldives we have our army now army is also being sent okay that's why we have to secure this area so government uh, in order to secure the maritime um, uh, maritime or the oceans of uh, our country uh, government is sending what ins vikramaditya ins uh, vikrant and also 15 warships are going to uh, travel to minikoi island 
and they will be inaugurated at a naval base INS Jatayu. Okay, that is how we are going to secure our Arabian Sea. Hypothyroidism is also there in the news. It is a condition when thyroid gland produces less of thyroid hormone. Thyroid gland is located here in the neck as a butterfly shape. One gland will be there. They have to produce that is a thyroid gland that has to produce thyroid hormone. Basically, the thyroid uh, gland produces three hormones T4, T3, and calcitonin. If the thyroid gland is not producing enough T4 and T3, it means the person is suffering from hypothyroidism. And it means uh, his thyroid is or her thyroid is functioning suboptimally. Then to produce this thyroid hormone, uh, thyroid stimulating hormone is also there. This thyroid stimulating hormone is again controlled by the master gland of our body, pituitary gland. Pituitary gland will say to thyroid stimulating hormone to produce T4, T3 like that. If this process does not happen, the individual is suffering from hyperthyroidism. Now, thyroid stimulating hormone controls the production of thyroid hormone. It tells the thyroid how much T3 and T4 to make. Okay. Now, it is very important to get checked with the thyroid, uh, thyroid uh, uh, hypothyroidism and it is uh, more important to the women who are pregnant, thyroid testing has, will become mandatory and the pregnant women will suffer from tiredness, feeling weak, fatigue, constipation, sometimes skin dry, depression, thinning of hair and bitter nails, brittle nails means nails to jate. The person, uh, the, the uh, uh, pregnant woman will also feel very cold, she will develop muscle cramps, joint pain, etc. and unexpected weight gain happen which even if she is not eating also the gain of weight will be there. Hypothyroidism is women typically also disrupt the period cycle. The, the women will have irregular periods. And remember this point, this hypothyroidism condition is not only for adults. Okay, even in young children, it could be seen. This is a very important statement. Remember this. Okay. PM Suryagar Mukt Bijli Yojana launched on 13 February 2024 to illuminate 1 crore households by offering 300 units of electricity free every month. So, 1 crore households will get eligible households will get benefited and up to 300 units will get what free electricity. And for this purpose, to uh, run this scheme, government has allocated 75,000 crore rupees as announced by the Prime Minister. SAR train, you can train, you can see a train like here. This train is being built, built by Russia. So, you can see that this is our Russia and this is Ukraine. So, this train will be built in two districts, uh, okay, which is facing to the Ukraine. So, this train is very strong. It cannot be broken like that the Russia is, Russia is saying. It is one of the defense mechanism that is put forth by the Russia in order to stop the Ukrainian army to march towards what Russia. Okay. The SAR train stretching approximately 30 kilometers of train will be there, which uh, is very strong and it cannot be uh, damaged or it cannot be destroyed. It will be built between Russia controlled towns of Oleninka and Walnovoka and it will serve as a formidable obstacle close to the front lines. Front lines are nothing but the army which is fighting, uh, Ukraine army which is fighting actually in the battlefield with the Russian. No? This uh, train will act as a barrier to them to advance. Okay, they will not allow the Ukrainian army to advance. Thanks a lot for hearing to me. Have a nice day ahead. That the admissions and the courses uh, information is giving the description. Please uh, um, do enroll and also subscribe and share the channel to all. Thank you.